Good morning. How you doing? You look full. How many uh, ate a little bit of turkey? Okay. I think I ate so much turkey, I'm growing feathers where I should be growing hair. I tell you, I went past a, uh, a field and, and saw all these turkey in it, and I thought, well, how did you survive Thanksgiving? And you roll your window down, and you listen, and they're going, moo, moo. And so, okay, some of you will catch that later. All right. On Facebook, you're seeing all the people thankful for everything, and, and, and they're on the social media, and just, you know, I'm thankful for this, thankful for that. I saw a cartoon caption came across, and there were two turkeys that were standing in the barnyard, and one's over a, a big uh, pile of corn, and the other one has a suitcase packed, and clothes are kind of hanging out of it, has a hat on and a coat, and he goes, I'm out of here. And the other one's going, come on, Frank, be reasonable. Why would he feed us so much if he didn't want to keep us around? That'll catch the rest of you later, right? It is awesome to be here with you today. I tell you what, God is good, and we have been on an awesome journey. We've been in the ministry probably coming on 20 or so years. I'm, I'm only 14, though. And now I, I want to introduce you to somebody that I am most thankful for uh, to the Lord, and that's my wife, Heather. This is my family here. We, uh, I, I know... Um, you didn't realize I'm quite the model. Um, at a person my size and age, that's hard to hold your leg like that, you know. And, uh, and, but these are our kids, Sierra and Hunter. And Sierra is 16 years old, and she's named after Sierra Leone, Africa, which my wife was a missionary kid, grew up in West Africa for a time, and also down in South Africa with her parents uh, in Durban, South Africa, who were missionaries. And our son, Hunter, he's 13 and three quarters you know, I had to get that one in there. He's 13 and three quarters, and he's named after our favorite pastime, which is hunting, and, and uh, we try to live up to that name. But that's my family. When we were shooting these pictures, we, we ended up, we came across a discovery, and it was kind of surprising. I, I had it pictured a little different. I, had, I, you know, we've always heard about, I'll show you. We came across this, and I just had it pictured different. I don't know. You know, it was, I, I've been told a little bit different on that. But anyway, we found that. But right here is what I'm thankful for. That's my family. And uh, Heather and I will be married 19 years this January. And again, she was um, 10 when we got married. And, and so, but we've had an awesome, awesome time. We are ARC Church Planners. ARC is Association of Related Churches. Pastor Q is our coach. We're working with the chapel and, and just learning. We have some incredible, incredible ministries here at this church, don't we? And there's some incredible volunteers. And literally from the parking lot all the way inside, you just see people giving of themselves. And many of you, uh, the, the goal is to serve one and go one. And, and many of you have already served in in the first service, and so we, we thank you for that. It's an interesting journey, this, this journey that we've been on, but it's one that I can look back and I can honestly tell you I'm thankful. There, I don't always understand how God works and don't always understand what's exactly going on or how it's going to play out, but i got to tell you, I'm thankful because I can trust him. Do you know you can trust God? Whether you understand him or not, you can trust him. You can trust no matter what you're going through, whatever circumstance you're in, you can trust him and you can thank him no matter what. It's interesting, one of the first things that we teach children is to say thanks. We teach them, somebody will, will give them something and what do we do? We go, you say, well, what do you say? Okay, some of you never, never learned that as a kid, evidently. <laughs> All right. When you're a kid, typically the first thing that's taught is to say thank you. We tell people why. Why is that so important? I want to tell you from a biblical perspective this morning, it's so important because it's something that God has designed in us. This ability and this intentional design in our lives to be thankful, regardless of our circumstance, regardless of our situation. There's a scripture, Psalms 139. It's one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. And it just shows about the intricacies of our creation and how intentional it was and how every detail of our life has been written out before one ever came to be. God, it, it tells me that God is in complete and total control of my life. The scripture, Psalms 139, 14, if you, if you have a Bible in front of you, you don't have a Bible with you or you're looking on your phone, the Bible in front of you, it's on page 505. You can look it up. 
Also, those Bibles are for you. If you, if you don't have a Bible, take one with you. Psalms 139.14, it says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Why do we praise him? Because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a whole lot that goes into that. You can look across this room, all over the place. Do that right now. Look all over the place. Not one of us is a mistake. Not one of us was a whoops. Not one of us was not intentionally designed by God. Not one of us. Not one of us is a chance sitting here. Or just somebody was just, you know, I, I just, just happen to be creative. No, you have an intentional designer, that being God, and you can be thankful for that because he sees your life, he sees your situation. Regardless of what you're going through, you can be thankful. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. I want to show you this morning that sometimes, especially around Thanksgiving time, we can focus on things that are lost more than things that are left. The holidays oftentimes has with it this, this mechanism that, that depression is up, suicides are up, and you can look at it and you go, why? Why is that? If you went out on Black Friday, you might know that. You know, it's, it gets crazy, but, but, it, but it's a fact. Emotions get high. People focus on what is lost. What do I mean by that? People will come together and they'll go, well, remember this person, they're not with us anymore for whatever reason. We look at the things that, well, I remember how, I wish how it could be. I, and, we, and we take our eyes off what is left. This morning, if we do that, we negate this ability to be thankful. And I want to show you this morning that when we're thankful, regardless of what our situation is, it changes us. It changes us. It may not change the situation, but it changes us. I started thinking back in my life, when I learned that concept, and it goes all the way back when I was in Bible school, and it was many years ago, minimum wage was three thirty-five an hour, school was uphill both ways, you guys remember those days, right? I got a job at Colonial Bakery working for seven sixty-eight an hour, that was big money for a college student at the time, and this was going to get, enable me my senior year to work all summer long and go back and pay in full my tuition. A short day for me would be nine or ten hours at the bakery. I would get six to eight hours off. I'd be called in. I was on 24-hour call all the time. 80, 90-hour weeks were were often in my work schedule. And I remember here I am training to be in ministry full-time and not even being able to go to church. I remember being so frustrated and stressed out and tired and depressed and just going, God, I just... I need to gather in community with other believers. I need to be able to, to hear the word. I, need to be, I don't even have time to really get the sleep that I need. And I remember just really just stressed out for two months. I didn't even go to church. One Sunday, it comes around, and they haven't called me in. And I'm going, I'm going to get to go to church today. This is going to be awesome. I get dressed. I'm getting ready to go out the door, and the phone rings. And I'm like, no. And they said, yeah, here he is. They hand me the phone. They said, hey, we need you in here in about a half hour. I said, okay. All right, I'll be right there. And to see, the, the option to say no was there, but I go to the bottom of the list, and I'm needing to earn the income, and God's given me this opportunity. And I remember I, I was so frustrated. I was so upset. I just sat there. I sat down at the kitchen table, and I just began to break. And I began to sob, and that wasn't like me. And I just, I, I mean, it was like that heaving, crying, just like, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I am so thirsty for you. I'm so hungry for you. I just, I feel so empty. And I remember my mom just came, my mom and dad are actually here this morning. They flew in from Missouri uh, to be with us for Thanksgiving. So I'm thankful for you guys. And I love you. My mom, my mom came and came and she goes, Alan, you know what? You're going to be able to relate to people when they're just tired, when they can't serve, when they just, they want to do something and they just can't do it, you're going to be able to relate. And you know what? Be thankful for the situation you're in because God's providing. And that's, that's just all I can tell you. You just, you just got to trust him. And, and I remember I left that day and I went to work and we worked in an environment. It was very loud and had to wear earplugs and I wore a hairnet because I had a killer mullet. And, uh, and uh, I don't care what you say, it was cool. <laughs> I could grow it back, it just wouldn't be much of it there, you know. 
And so here I am, and I'm working, and I'm loading trucks and all this, and I just begin to, I just begin to hum praises to God. I just begin to talk to God, and I begin to go, God, thank you. God, thank you for the provision of this job. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you that you've opened doors up until now. God, thank you. I'm going to be a senior now. Lord, thank you. And, and I just begin to thank him. And I got to tell you, that was the first time, furthest back I could remember, to try to share with you this morning that all of a sudden, Thanksgiving, it didn't change my situation, but it changed me. It changed me. And I thought, why is that? And as I, as I was preparing for this, I'm like, Lord, why is that? I believe it deals with us being fearfully and wonderfully made. There's a mechanism that God has placed in our lives that changes us. It may not change your situation, but it will change you. And all of a sudden that day, I, I, just, I left from there, and, and I felt better. I had a better outlook on life, but my situation had absolutely not changed. Paul is talking about in Scripture, he's talking to the Ephesians at one point, and he's, he's laying out how you need to be imitators of God and be careful of this and, and, and do this, and, and he's laying out all these different things. In Ephesians 5, if you look, uh, you can look it up in uh, uh, 949, page 949, he says this, he says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. He says, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. He says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. All of us have at one time in our life, and maybe now, more than ever, gone, God, what is your will for my life? God, what does it look like? What is your will? And we get consumed with that. God, if you'll just tell me, if you just listen to me, thankfulness is at the center of that. He says, understand what the Lord's will is. He says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, which is sin or wickedness. A lot of people will take and, and just drown their sorrows. They want to check out. They want to go into fantasy land when, when things, people will do the same, same concept on the computer and just try to check out a reality. I want to tell you this morning, thankfulness will change you. Thankfulness in your situation will change all things. He says this. He says, instead of, instead of getting drunk on wine, which leads to, instead be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. What does this do? It builds us up. It encourages us. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always. When? Always. Oh, when I feel like it? Always. Oh, when I, when I recognize it or when I want to? No. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting. God has created us fearfully and wonderfully made. He's created a spiritual aspect in you and I. When he breathed into us, he's created this spiritual aspect with a physical aspect to it. They'll mirror each other sometimes. It's interesting, even our scientific community, our medical community recognize this. If you've ever been around a terminally ill person, or you've talked to hospice workers, one of the number one thing that people will tell you regarding a terminally ill patient is the difference between survival or extending survival or even beating the disease is their attitude and their ability to be thankful. And I've been around people who are terminally ill, and I've talked to them, and and there's times you go in to minister to them, and all of a sudden you leave feeling like you've, you've been ministered to. Their spirits are up. They're high. They're, they're hopeful. They're thankful for their care. They're thankful for their family. And all of a sudden, this, this spirit comes over them. Dr. Morali Dorswamy, and that is how you say it. Trust me. Head of the Division of Biologic Psychology at Duke University Medical Center, he said, if thankfulness were a drug... It would be the world's best-selling product with a health maintenance indication for every major organ system. The medical community recognizes this. What's frustrating to me sometimes is the, the Christian community doesn't. They set it aside. They get frustrated. When we should be the ones who should be imitators of God and be thankful in all situations, I think about the Scripture when on the night Jesus was betrayed, he gave thanks there's this ability that God has placed in us that if we will grab hold of it and go, God, regardless of what I'm going through, regardless of what I even think, God, I trust you and I thank you anyway because I know you're in control. I'm fearfully, I'm wonderfully made. The medical community recognizes this. It's interesting how our brain works. 
The brain's fundamental organizing principle is two things, to avoid threat and to maximize rewards and opportunities. Your brain does this in an instance. Your brain will take a situation and go, is it a threat? Avoid it. Is it an opportunity or a reward? I'll maximize it. Your brain does that in a a moment's notice. What's interesting about it is your brain will not differentiate between reality or fiction. Your brain will just do it. How many of you cry in a sad movie? You're honest. How many cried when old Yeller died? How many, if you're like me, it's just stuffy in the room, it's kind of dusty, your allergies are working, you're choking on a piece of popcorn, something like that, right? Or you read, or, or, or you watch a scary movie, a thrill or a horror movie, and you're watching it, and all of a sudden this fear comes up in you. And it's just, you're, you're scared, there's this fear. Here's the thing, neither one of those are real. One of them's a story. It's not real, but your, your, your body, your whole being reacts to it, Right? You watch the movie, your whole being's reacting to it. There's nothing scary going on in your life right now. It's just, it, it's reacting to it. Our brain works that way. God made us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. That tells me that whatever situation I go through, I can be changed. When I tap into my creator and I go, God, I trust you anyway. Lord, I praise you anyway. God, I'm thankful anyway. God, I'm thankful for what you're, not just you're doing, but God, what you're going to do. I trust you. And all of a sudden, my body reacts to that. Is this self-help? No, it's how God designed you. It puts faith into motion. All of a sudden, it changes you. And your situation may not change, but all of a sudden, God shows up in the middle of it, and he gets you through it. 1 Thessalonians says, rejoice always. Pray continually. You say, how do I rejoice in this circumstance, in this situation? Rejoice always. Pray continually. That's how you rejoice always. They're tied together. And give thanks in all circumstances. Here it is. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you're sitting here today and you're going, God, I'm just wanting your will for my life. I'm just wanting you. Start with thanks. Start with thanks. God, I may not know. I may not see how it's going to play out. But God, I thank you anyway. You may be here and you're looking for that deal for your house. You're looking for some kind of job. You're looking for provision from the Lord. Start with thanks. You know, Thanksgiving is a celebration. It comes once a year and there's all kinds of marketing and, and, and everything tied to it. But I got to tell you, Thanksgiving is something God has placed in each and every one of our lives. And it will change you. It will change you. Matthew Henry was a man who wrote six-volume commentary back in the late, 17, late 1600s and early 1700s. Matthew Henry, he started law school, and then in the middle of that, switched to a theology degree because he felt like he should be a minister and a pastor, and so he became a Presbyterian minister. And he began to write six volumes. Ultimately, it was six volumes. From the Old Testament all the way into the New, he wrote a verse-by-verse commentary of the entire Old Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels of the New Testament, and the book of Acts. What's interesting is over the, uh, he, he passed away before he could finish it, and from what, Romans to Revelation, it took 13 men the next 100 years to put everything together to finish a commentary, which we call the Matthew Henry Commentary. Preachers of old, George Whitfield and and even Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, they, they would say every minister should read this commentary. And even today, it's one of the most quoted and studied commentaries, even to this day. This man had given his entire life to the Word of God. What's interesting is, is from Romans to Revelation, how they finished this, these 13 men, is most of the notes that they gathered to finish it were from congregants. From his, from his church, from Matthew Henry's church that he preached to, and they gathered notes of what they had taken from his sermons and were able to put it together. It would be likened to taking all the notes that Pastor Q has preached over the years on different, different uh, scriptures and writing a commentary of your notes that are, that are all put together. It was amazing. Matthew Henry had given his heart, his life, his, his whole being to the work of the Lord. And at one point, he was robbed. He was robbed of everything. 
And back then, and, and even now, you know, ministers don't have a whole lot. And, and he sure didn't at that time, but they, they stole everything from him. And for somebody to have the excuse to say, Lord, I've done all of this. Why would you allow this to happen? God, I can't believe. I, I've committed myself. I've committed my life. Why would you let this happen to me? Matthew Henry could have been that person. Here's what he wrote in his, in his diary the night after he was, after he was robbed. He said, I, I am thankful that during these years, I've never been robbed before. He said, also, even though they took my money, they did not take my life. And he said, although they took all I had, it was not much. And finally, I am grateful that it was I, that it was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. I mean, what an angle to look at a situation and go, God, I'm just, I'm thankful that this hasn't happened until now. I mean, how many of us think like that? How many of us actually look at our situation and go, well, you know, Lord, at least I can breathe. God, at least, at least I'm able to still see. If you're sitting next to somebody today that you know, you have something to be thankful for. If you can see me today, you have something to be thankful for. Even though it may not be much to look at, right? We have so many things to be thankful for all around us, going on all the time. And how many times we let our brain override and go, no, avoid threat. Oh, avoid threat. No, no, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And then we focus on what's lost and not what's left. I want to tell you, thankfulness will change your life. It'll change your life. All through the Scripture of the New Testament, when Paul is writing, this theme is continual. Be thankful. Be thankful. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, in Colossians, Paul talks about, he says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, I mean, he lays it out there, whatever you do, you say, well, but what about this? And that? No. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, otherwise, whatever you do, what you're saying, in what you're doing or a part of, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. How? Giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. And listen to me. Whatever you do, wherever you find yourself in, you may be on a crazy journey like we're on. It's exciting. You know God's in control. You know he's working. But sometimes there's a crossroads and you've got to choose how this is going to look, what this is going to be. God, I'm going to focus on you. I find that when I focus on him and not on the situation, my eyes can't go to what's lost. My eyes simply go to what's left. And what I have left at the end of the day, I love my family with all my heart. I'm, I'm so thankful for them. But at the end of the day, I know that my God is there. I know that God will never fail me. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that nothing comes my way ever pass through his hands without his knowledge. So whatever you're going through today, he can take you through it. He can change you. Oh, he can change your situation in a moment's time. But he may not. But he can totally change you. Thanksgiving does that. Trust God. Be thankful no matter what.